They were all gone. I, I knew there was a problem when they started ripping down a statue of Abraham Lincoln. I said, they're going to take down the statue of Lincoln? I don't think that's so. We're not going to let that happen. And we've got to be tough, because if you see what's happening in Aurora, Colorado today, did you see that? Where Ven Venezuelan gang members have taken over parts of the city. They've taken over apartment houses because these stupid people that we have leading our country are allowing these people, these criminals, to come and to come into our country, and we're going to get them the hell out of here. And this is just the beginning. Wait till you see what happens. Wait till you see what they're doing. Unbelievable. No, it's all these congressmen. They're looking. They're just shaking their head. They can't believe it. They can't believe two things, actually. The size of these crowds, you know, you could fill this place up three times. Why didn't you get a larger arena? Huh? Somebody said, as we're riding by, oh, it's too bad the arena hasn't started filling up. I said, no, you don't understand. It's totally full, but the line goes back for miles. It's already full. But we got to do that, fellas, you know? We got to do it. Because I've been saying for a long time, I said, these people are coming in from prisons and jails. Nobody listened to me. They're murderers. They're drug dealers. If you take a look at Venezuela as an example, their crime is down 72 percent. Because they've taken their criminals from Caracas. They've taken their drug dealers. They're emptying their prisons into our country. Their crime is down all over the world. Crime is down. In the Congo, in Africa, 22 people deposited into our country. Where do you come from, the Congo? We're in the Congo. Jail. What did you do? We will not say that. You can imagine. Listen, they come from Africa. They come from the Middle East, countries that are not friends of ours. And they're coming by the millions, by the millions. And these fools, Kamala, He's a Marxist. These fools are letting them come into our country, destroy our country. And I said, you know, did you ever see the hat? I don't want to brag, but they do have a big selling hat. You know what it says? Trump was right about everything, right? Front row Joes. Front row Joes. Right? No, but it's... Hey, look, if I ran one of those countries, I would be doing better than them at getting the people out. You run a country, the country's inundated with really tough people that are criminals. I want to get them the hell out. If I was the head of a country, the president of a country, if I was in charge of anything having to do with the country, I would have moved them out even faster than they're doing. They are moving people into our country at numbers that nobody's ever seen. And those countries are becoming safe countries. And wait till you see what's going to happen. You know, they're just getting acclimated. You know what that means, acclimated. They're getting used to a society that really goes too far. In the only thing they go after is guys like Trump because he protests an election. That's the only thing they're good at going after. They don't go after criminals. They don't go after people that kill people. They don't go after drug dealers that kill, on average, 500 people during their lifetime. So a drug dealer kills 500 people. And the only thing they would understand would be the death penalty. If you had the death penalty for drug dealers, you wouldn't have any more drugs. You wouldn't have any more drugs. <laughs> Instead, we form blue ribbon committees made up of our great first lady and lots of people, like Steve Whitcuff, great developer in New York. But they don't do this for a living. The only thing they understand, I went to China, I saw President Xi had a good relationship until COVID came in, then I broke it off. It was, that was too much. <laughs> but I said to him, and I had a great relationship with him, and I will again, probably. But I said, do you have a drug problem? 1.4 billion people. No, 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 we have no drug problem. Why don't you have a drug problem? Because we have the death penalty, he said, for drug dealers. If they sell drugs, they die, he said. 
So those people that sold drugs, they said, you know, let's go to another country. This is a little bit tough. But they do in many other countries. In countries where you have that, you don't have a drug problem. And we are becoming a drug-infested nation, whether you like it or not. We're becoming a drug-infested nation. So we better get our act together. You know, years ago, centuries ago, China was taken over numerous times by smaller nations, much smaller nations, because they were all drugged out from the opium fields and all of that. And then one of their very powerful leaders said no more, and they ended it. And we're going to have to end it, too, because we're really a country that is a — we're a failing nation in a lot of ways. What they've done to our country is incredible. What is Kamala, who's a total lightweight — did you see her on television last night? This is going to be the president. This is going to be the president of our country? I don't think so. Sitting propped up on a desk with this guy, this, this uh, tampon Tim, tampon. <laughs> and it's the first interview she's done, and like, nobody's ever seen anything like it. And if you're too weak to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with a person that was so soft. You know, I know Dana. She's always, you know, always nasty. She was so nice to the Democrats. It's much easier to be a Democrat, but we don't agree in their policies because their policies will destroy our nation. So we can't do that. We can't do that. But it was a very weak interview from the standpoint of CNN. I think CNN should be ashamed of themselves. If that were me, aren't they? Sir, I heard you want the death penalty for drug dealers. Why? Well, you know, I'd like to end the drug epidemic, if that's okay. Remember this, and I said it. Every drug dealer, on average, kills 500 people. That's not mentioning all of the families that are destroyed forever. They're destroyed forever. And we have to do something about it, because we are becoming, and we are, a drug-infested nation. We have to do something. And if you did that meaningfully, you will, in one week, stop the drug problem. Nobody's going to be selling drugs. Nobody. I don't know if the country's ready for it, but they should. You know, we lost — they give you fake numbers, the real numbers. We lost uh, probably 350,000 people last year to drugs, to fentanyl and other drugs. I had a deal with President Xi, who was going to put that on the — on their — ultimate crime list. That's where they give the death penalty. If they make it in China, they sell it here. He was going to give the death penalty. When we had a rigged election, what happened is, when I left, they never picked it up. Biden never picked it up, so they never did it. But they were going to give the death penalty, which is their ultimate, ultimate uh, punishment. You can't get too much more ultimate than that. They were going to give the death penalty to the fentanyl makers in China if they make it and sell it in here. And they were going to do it because, you know, otherwise we weren't going to do trade. Little things like, we won't trade with you anymore. We won't pay you billions of dollars anymore. So easy. So easy. But people like Kamala, she let San Francisco die. She destroyed probably the greatest city, maybe one of the greatest cities, but could be. A friend of mine, Bob Tish, used to say years ago, he said San Francisco is the greatest city in America. That was probably 16 so — he passed away. Great guy. He passed away. But he used to talk about San Francisco all the time. Today, he can't walk into San Francisco. She destroyed it. She destroyed it. She's the one that started it, too. She was the district attorney. Then she destroyed California, along with Gavin Newsom. You know that? <laughs> one of the truly bad governors. But the fake news is doing everything possible, everything they can, to help Kamala Harris. Do you ever notice nobody knows what her last name is? I go, okay, I'm going to give you the first name. Tell me the last name. I say, Kamala. Uh, they have no idea who the hell she is. But as they find out, you notice our poll numbers are starting to skyrocket. When they find out that she's a Marxist, when they find out her father, you know, is a Marxist professor, you know that. When they find out that she was the one that destroyed California and San Francisco a long time ago, uh, you can't have this. Look, we have to put our country back into shape. Somebody said, 
women don't like Donald Trump. I said, I think that's wrong. I think they love me. I love them. I love them. Speaking of them, North Carolina, these women, this is number 227 rally. And they've been to some other than rallies. 220. They're wealthy as hell. Look at them. They've got nothing but cash. Their husbands are great. But they allow them to go all over the country. They follow me all over the country. We have front row Joes over here. We got the women from North Carolina. Look at them. And no, but they're great patriots. They're great patriots. And, you know, I spoke to the husbands one time. I say, how do you put up with this? Your husbands, your wives are traveling all over the place. Do you mind? We trust our wives, sir. We trust them implicitly. I said, well, you have great wives, let me tell you. But they've traveled, I think it's like 228, something like that. But it is beautiful to have you here. We love to have you here. Always perfectly quaffed. They're always perfectly quaffed, right? They're beautiful. They're great women, great women. And we appreciate their being here. We appreciate you guys being here. You were here in Butler. They were there in Butler. I remember they were standing there in the front. Front row Joes, you know what? They get here like three days early. They wait around for three days, four days. They probably got to know some of my guys by now. I would think they don't have to be quite so uh, anxious. They're going to be, uh, but they've done a great job. And then we have Mr. Wall. Irving Wall, would you please stand up? Irving Wall. He is a great guy, and he was there for Butler, too, wasn't he? He was there. I saw him there. But he's been to many shows. How many shows have you been to? He's lost track. I agree. I agree, but I appreciate it. We appreciate it. The whole place appreciates it. They're ultimately there. They're patriots. It's not about me. These are incredible patriots. These ladies are incredible patriots. So I just want to thank you. Incredible. But to show you how bad the fake news is, some of the Gold Star families, you probably read this over the last couple of days, and you know, a lot of people say, sir, don't hit down. Don't hit down on them, the fake news. Don't hit down, sir. Don't even mention it. I said, should I mention it? Don't hit down. Well, but it became sort of a story. So I always like to mention it. Because if you don't mention it, our supporters don't really know what to believe, and they sort of believe this stuff. So the Gold Star families and uh, incredible people, and I got to know them because uh, the 13 families who were, as you know, lost a loved one in Afghanistan so needlessly because we have incompetent, we have an incompetent president and vice president, grossly incompetent, and we had Milley and these incompetent generals that should have been fired immediately. Not one person was fired over Afghanistan. And by the way, Russia saw that, they went into Ukraine. Because they said, I had no idea that the United States was so stupid. So, and you know, when I was running that, I spoke to the leader of the Taliban. He run, they run the whole deal. And I said, Abdul, don't even think. Don't do it, Abdul, don't do it. Because they were shooting, they were killing our people. And they were really killing them previous to me and Obama. They were killing them in the Obama administration and with Biden. Biden. But uh, how did he do in the debate? A friend of mine said, sir, what did you do? You I said, how good was I tonight? Sir, you probably got him thrown out. Now you're going to have to run against somebody new. I said, I don't care. I have to do what I have to do. We have to do what we have to do, right? And I look forward to the debate with her. But what happened, so, with Afghanistan, you know, I do the weave. You know what the weave is? I'll talk about, like, nine different things, and they all come back brilliantly together. And it's like, and friends of mine that are, like, English professors, they say, it's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and, but the fake news, you know what they say? He rambled. That's not rambling. When you have, what you do is you get off a subject to mention another little tidbit, then you get back onto the subject, and you go through this, and you do it for two hours, and you don't even mispronounce one word. And they say he had 100,000 people. You know, in New Jersey, we had 107,000 people. They never like to report it, so I say it. But 
In Wildwood, New Jersey, they announced 107,000 people. And then they say, well, look at this. I mean, if you gave me a big arena, I would have, we would have said 45,000 people or something. But it is rather brilliant. But they say, yes, you rambled, but in Afghanistan. So what happens is you take the wonderful families and they come in and we're in Washington. They said, would it be possible, sir, would it be at all possible for you to come because we're celebrating our child's life? The child was buried because of Joe Biden and Comrade Harris. Would it be at all possible, sir, for you to be there? And I said, yeah, it's going to be real tough. I was really, like, far away. And sometimes it's tough. But I said, you know what? We have to do it. And I got my team, and I said, let's go. We're going to Arlington Cemetery. Okay. I said, we're going to Arlington. Because, again, I got to know these people. Because, honestly, they would send me death certificates of their child. They said, sir, would you sign it? Please sign it. We refuse to accept his name on this death certificate. They said he killed our child, and honestly, the incompetence killed their, their children. The incompetence, gross. And by the way, they lost almost 500 people that day, including the other side. They left Americans behind. They're still there. Nobody knows even what happened to them. Think of this. They left $85 billion worth of brand new military equipment that I bought because I rebuilt the entire military. $85 billion worth of equipment behind. They left everything, and they moved the military first. Instead of last, you say, you stupid people, you take the military out last. For 18 months, and a lot of you know this, for 18 months, not one American, after I spoke to Abdul, the leader of the Taliban, not one person was shot. We didn't lose one person for 18 months. In fact, Joe Biden got up on television one day, and he said, for 18 months, not one person was shot during the Trump administration. Then the people started screaming at him, you stupid, don't say that. You know, you are so stupid, they tell him. But I appreciated that he said that. But it's true, for 18 months, Nobody was lost, and nobody would have been lost, and we would have, and we were getting out. I had it down to 5,000 people, but we were going to keep Bagram, which is the big air base, one of the biggest in the world, had the biggest runways, most powerful runways, eight foot deep. You could land anything on those runways. Not because of Afghanistan. We we're keeping Bagram for a different reason. One hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons, right? So I got a call from the people. Sir, we're going to be going to Arlington to honor our children who were killed. And they are devastated, the people. I had them over at uh, Bedminster, and they didn't think I'd see them. And they said, do you think we'll see him? And they said, well, we don't know. He'll try and make it. I ended up spending four hours late at night listening to music with all of the relatives of the people that were killed, so needlessly killed. And I got to know them. I got to know them. And we were looking at the sky, beautiful place. We're looking at the sky, and we're listening to Elvis, and we're listening to Elton John. We're listening to everybody. And I said, look, your son is looking down at you. And it was, the whole thing was beautiful. And you get to know them. I spent, they, they didn't think I'd see them, but at most, I would spend 15 minutes. And I ended up spending many hours. So I got to know them. So they called up, and they said, do you think you could be there, sir? I said, I'll try if I can. And we really had to turn things around. Anyway, I got there. And we had a ceremony. We had the changing of the guard. No, we had a beautiful ceremony. And then they said, sir, could you come to the graves? Could you come to the graves? After the ceremony, they said, could you come to the graves? Would that be possible? I said, I will, but I got, like, this big stadium, something was waiting. I said, but I'm going to, because those people are the love of our lives. They are the love of our lives, right? And in all fairness, I can say this, the, the mothers, fathers, sisters, the brother, 
but the various people that we're talking about, depending on who it is, but the various people, uh, they say it to me, I'll say it to you. I, mean, I, I don't think they can ever be the same. I said, is it better now, because it's three years, is it better? No, it's not better. You know, they have an expression, time heals all wounds. But I said, is that expression true? No, sir, it's, maybe it's worse now, sir. It's, it's devastating, these people are just so devastated. So anyway, we're there, and they said a prayer, different graves, one here, one there. And they said to me, I mean, I'm not surprised, I never even thought about it. Sir, would it be possible for you to have a picture with us on the, by the tombstone of my son? You know, the beautiful white tombstones, marble, beautiful, beautiful things, and carved, engraved with the names on them. I said, absolutely. I wasn't doing it for, I don't need publicity. I get a lot of publicity. I get, I would like to get a lot less publicity. I would pay to get, I'm the only guy who would hire a public relations agent to get less publicity. <laughs> Most hire to get publicity. So I was taking pictures at the grave, one with the sister and then the mother and then the father come in and then another group at a different grave. And, and it was so beautiful and we left and everything was nice. And then later on that day, I heard that we were using the graves of those soldiers for public relations purposes, you know? And that was all put out by the White House. Joe Biden killed those young people because he was incompetent. And then they tell me that I used their graves for public relations services, and I didn't. And I'll tell you what, it was a disgrace. And she was involved. Remember, she said she was the last person in the room, right, when they made the decision. And uh, pulling out was okay, but not pulling out like a bunch of incompetent fools. And that's what they did. We had them in such a great position. But when I took those pictures, it was so beautiful. They were crying. Everybody was crying. They were talking about three years ago, because of a grossly incompetent group of generals, and we have great generals. Don't forget, we defeated ISIS entirely with great generals, real generals, not these television morons that you see all the time. But when I saw that, I said, I think I have to talk about it. Now, my people said, don't do it, sir. Don't do it. But if I don't tell you the story, you're going to read. It was front page of the Washington Post, which has lost approximately 57 percent of their readers over the last three years. It was a story in the New York Times, which is losing reader after reader. I'm happy about that. I have to be happy, because they truly are the enemy of the people. They are the enemy of the people. They tell false stories about me. That's all they do is they write false stories. They're incapable. I could do the greatest thing. i got to tell you, I ran for office, and they were covering it viciously, but it was front page every day, every day, and then I won. I beat everybody, and I had a story on page 17. <laughs> so I won, David, and my story was on page 17, but I was always on page one when I made a little speech or something. It's, uh, that's why they call it the fake news media. It's desperately trying to hide Kamala's failures and extremism from the public. They don't want the people to know how unfit she is to serve. She's unfit to serve. She, everything she touches, she ruins. Uh, just to finish this, I love those people. I'm so happy they took pictures of me and them and the tombstone and their lovely son or daughter. There was a daughter, too and an incredible daughter, frankly. I've almost gotten to know them, even though I never met them, but I know everything about them. The mother would walk up and say, Sir, may I tell you about my boy? You know, he was a football player, and he could throw the ball so far. He played quarterback, sir. And one day, and I realized that she's telling me a story and crying about her son, who's now in a grave because of Biden and Kamala, and I listened to that whole story, how the ball was caught, how the ball was thrown, how the team did, the season the team had, and I let her talk. And then these people accused me of 
doing this for public relations reasons. And, and the fact that we even, the fact that we even got there, the fact that we even got there, so I just want to, and they were so good, they said, how dare they do that? We asked him, they did ask me. And you know, they actually came to my defense, it's nice, because sometimes that doesn't happen too. But they really did, they said, uh, we asked him to be here, and we want him to be there always, and I just think that's great, and we love you all, thank you. But I, I wrote for this particular group, you know, because this is, you know, she's anti-fracking, she's anti-everything, this Pennsylvania. And I said, uh, do me a favor, make a little uh, reel of uh, Kamala. Kamala Harris has no right being here. She got no votes. She ran. She was one of 22 people that ran. She was the first one to quit. She never made it to Iowa in the primaries, the first state. She was nasty to Biden. She called him a racist and everything else. You know, she probably called me a racist on in a week from now, a week and a half. I look forward to that debate very much. <laughs> but she called him a racist, remember the school bus. All she can do, she can memorize a little bit, not a lot, but she memorized a little story about a girl taking a bus. And she used it on Biden. And so when Biden picked her, I was shocked because nobody treated him so badly as her. But let's take a look at uh, the real Kamala Harris. Yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing and right. take it seriously. As President of the United States, I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Let's eliminate all of that. But would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, yes. The, you know, the food pyramid. What people yes. Are yes. To reduce red meat specifically. Yes, I would. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Where do you stand on defund the police? This whole movement is about rightly saying we need to take a look at these budgets. Harris asserted that ICE is perceived as the modern day Ku Klux Klan. Are you aware that there's a perception? I see no. Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? I see to no peril. I'm not finished. I see none. And yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing. But that's her. And now she's changed everything. In fact, I think she is going to soon apply for, give me an application for joining MAGA. She's going <laughs> she to be wearing a MAGA cap. Now, that's her. And she can't do anything about it because that's where she is. Or with a politician, when they come out with something, that's where they end up. And she will destroy the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Just remember that. And we should win a blowout. We should blow them out. You know, we win the state, we win the whole thing. And we won it in 2016, and we did much better in 2020, you know that, much better, with the whole election. Actually, with, in 2016, we did great, but 2020, we did much better, generally. Since Kamala and the media don't want to talk about her radical record, we will. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's all right. That's okay. No, he's on our side. <laughs> we get a little uh, itchy, David, don't we? Our, no, no, he's on our side. You know what he's showing? At Butler, an amazing thing happened. You had two American flags very far apart, held up, I think, by different cranes. They were very big flags, beautiful flags, and they were waving. And as that horrible event was taking place, the wind blew the flags together, and they formed a perfect angel. I don't know if we have it, but it was a perfect angel was formed. I'll tell you, a lot of, a lot of things happened. If we have it, put it up. If we don't have it, that's all right.
That's it. That's it. That's it. He had the angel. He held up the angel, and our people went after him. Oh, no, he's on our side. He's on our side. Thank you very much. It's very nice.